Shabbat Shalom, Body of Messiah, Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's Laws and Commandments. I pray your week was good. I pray that Yah's blessing was strong upon you. I pray for those that this past week have been challenging. I pray that Yah would strengthen you, Yah would make a way for you where there seems to be no way, and that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Today, we want to talk about Shavuot, Torah, and Yahweh's power. Yahweh's power anointing is the focus of what we want to talk about. But first off, <clears throat> there's two things that Chavo is about. It's almost like a marriage, and that is the Torah and Yahweh's power or his spirit, the manifestations of his spirit, the work of his spirit, the anointing of his spirit. Now one thing I have noticed being in Torah for a while that there is much teaching and faith in the Torah, and there should be. But there is very little teaching on Yahweh's power. There's very little teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. There's very little teaching on His anointing flowing through the body, performing signs, wonders, and miracles, breaking bondages, setting the captives free. And that needs to change. Now, when I was in charismatic Christianity, there was no teaching on the Torah. There was no teaching on Yah's laws and commandments. The primary focus was on the power of the Most High, on Yahweh's Spirit manifesting Himself in setting people free. Now that balance is wrong as well. We need a proper balance of the Torah and of Yahweh's power. And one thing to look at and examine in your own life, as a Torah believer, do you have as much zeal as much fire for Yah's power as you do the Torah. And yes, the Torah is the foundation of everything that we believe in. And it is the way. But Yahshua, if you Look at Yahshua's ministry. Many people's lives were altered and changed because of the power of the Spirit that they saw functioning through the Messiah. Here I wrote down a, um, a note. Uh, go to John chapter 2. Verse 23, the Gospel of John, chapter 2, and verse 23. Now, I'm not going to spend tons of time focusing in on that the Torah was given on Shavuot to Israel, but that is a key truth that when we celebrate Shavuot that we are understanding that we are to remember 
that on this day, the Torah was given, the instructions of Yah were given through Moshe to the people of Israel. And so that's our foundation. And most of us in Torah understand that. Now there are some teachings I give that I believe Yah's objective is to reach people that don't understand Torah and that he would reveal things to them about Torah for them to have faith in Torah. But now I believe this teaching is to minister to and challenge those that are in Torah to broaden their spiritual walls, so to speak. Many times people put up walls, spiritual walls, and they will only receive certain things that are in the scriptures. Other things that are in the scriptures, they don't receive it. They don't look at it. They don't think about it. They don't research it. And we need to push our walls outward so that we are able to receive or accept all of Yah's instructions. Now, what we're talking about today, about Shavuot, the Torah, and Yah's power, the scriptures that we're going to go over on Yah's power are just as much his instructions as the commandments are or you know the feasts or whatever they're just coming through Yahshua and the disciples well here let's look in John 2 23 and it says and when he was at Jerusalem at Pesach, at the festival, many believed in his name when they saw the signs or when the power of the Spirit was in operation through Yahshua, which he was doing. So many people hear John said that they believed in his name, Yahshua. They believed in him being the Messiah. And they acted accordingly. See, when you believe something, you will respond with corresponding actions that will be in accordance to what you believe. And so they believed in his name, not by his teaching not by the teaching of the Torah, but by the signs which he did, or by the power which was being manifested through him. And we know that in John chapter 2, he turned water into wine, creative miracle. That's the power of Yah's spirit. And many people's lives, you might have family members, loved ones, co-workers, fellow students, neighbors, so on and so forth, that they're going to believe in his name once they see his power once they experience on a personal level, level deliverance, healing, restoration, or answers that they need in their life. I know for myself, when my sister in 1980 witnessed to me about a personal relationship with the Messiah that night when I was asleep, <coughs> Yeshua appeared to me and when he appeared to me 
all the desire for the drugs and alcohol and lust and pornography and all that whole lifestyle was removed from inside of me and his spirit came to dwell within me and I woke up a totally transformed man no longer desiring the things of this world I was delivered and because of that I responded in faith and the first thing I asked my mom was do we have a Bible and so I began to read the scriptures but you know without that manifestation of Yah's power revealing the Messiah you know I don't know if her words would have been enough because she shared what she shared with me and I you know didn't reject it but I also didn't understand much of it and in the same way many people's lives today <clears throat> excuse me that you desire to reach that Yah desires to come to the knowledge of the truth and be delivered will not be delivered without experiencing Yah's power now you can experience Yah's power just through reading the scriptures but many in the ministry of Yeshua and in the early assemblies Yah's power was in manifestation and people's lives were transformed out of darkness into light and I believe that's the key goal in this teaching that you would realize how much you need personally first of all in your life Yah's power and secondly those that are around you need to experience Yah's power but they're not going to experience it if you don't know how to work with it if you don't know how to yield to the manifestations of the spirit and of power now Paul said in 2 Corinthians or no excuse me it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2 let me just turn there real quickly 1 Corinthians chapter 2 he said Paul said my word and my preaching were not with persuasive words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power and see and that's the way we need to that needs to be our testimony that it's not about what I say or it's not about how I say it but it's about the demonstration of Yah's spirit the signs wonders and miracles the conviction the righteousness the repentance of Yah's spirit that comes into our life as well as his power it's his power that raised Lazarus from the dead it's Yah's power that cleanses you of all unrighteousness it's Yah's power that when you speak the word of Yahweh it does not return to him void but it accomplishes where it was sent it is Yah's power when you command the bondages of drug addiction or alcoholism or lawlessness to be broken and to come out of that human being it's Yah's power that does it it's Yah's power that performs many signs wonders and miracles financial miracles healing miracles creative miracles it's Yah's power that when you don't have a foot that Yah's power creates you a foot 
Or like in Acts chapter 3, um, when Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, and they prayed over that man at the gate, and he leaped up and rejoiced and was glorifying Elohim because of the healing miracle in his life. It was the power of Yah's spirit that did that. Now, we know that the scripture says that faith and faith in his name caused that miracle. But without power, Yah's power in that, that miracle wouldn't be wouldn't have happened. How many times have we prayed for ourselves or others by the power of his name and nothing took place? So we we need Yah's spirit and Yah himself to incorporate and to anoint us with the power anointing. I remember when I was in charismatic Christianity and I was reading all the stories and testimonies about Smith Wigglesworth and A.A. A. Allen and William Brannan and Catherine Kuhlman and Oral Roberts and Kenneth Hagin. You know, they had an, a power anointing. And yes, they, they were caught up in pagan Christianity like I was, but didn't, maybe they didn't know any better. But nonetheless, lives were changed, lives were healed, lives were delivered by the power of our Heavenly Father. And so we need a fresh wind of Yah's Spirit and a fresh anointing of His power to come upon us and to be joined together in us with the Torah. That we teach the Torah, we live the Torah, we obey the Torah, we keep the Torah, we love the Torah. But we also need, and others that we are ministering to, need Yah's power to change his life. And we see here that Paul said, that his preaching was in demonstration of the spirit and power in order that your belief or faith should not what rests in the wisdom of men but in the power of Elohim Yah wants your faith your belief your confidence to be strong in the power of Elohim not in um, man's words of wisdom and, you know, how they talk. It is so fluent and beautiful and they say the right things at the right times. You know, all that is good, but that's not going to heal you. Excuse me. That's not going to deliver you. That's not going <clears> to <throat> convict you. It's Yah's power that will do those things. Now, um, in Exodus 19 and 20, I'd encourage you to read all those chapters, and you will, you will see that this is when the Torah was given. And just for the sake of time, um, I'm not going to go into those, but Exodus 19 and Exodus chapters 20 we need to read, because that's when the Torah was given. We need to receive the Torah. We need to receive his laws and commandments. Well, it says in verse 1, 19, 1, And in the third new moon, after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Mitzrayim, on this day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they set out from Rephidim, and had come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. Moshe went up to Elohim and Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, called him 
from the mountain, saying, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, Jacob, and declare to the children of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Mitzrites, Egypt, and how I bore you on eagle's, wing, eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you diligently obey my voice, if you diligently obey my voice, if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard or protect my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people and said before them all these words, which Yahweh commanded him. And you can read the rest of that chapter in chapter 20 and go over the Torah, what the Torah is, and see how many times he said it's forever. We understand that. So the Feast of Shavuot is all about celebrating when Yah and remembering when Yah gave his instructions to Israel, to all the tribes of Israel, and commanded them to listen to his voice and to obey his laws and commandments. And if you did that, you would be his chosen people. So we are his chosen people. Doesn't matter the color of your skin, doesn't matter your background. It matters whether or not you have decided, I want to serve the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And when you do, you will then begin to follow his instructions, his laws, his commandments. Okay? That's the foundation of Shavuot. Now, um, let's turn to Luke chapter 24 and these are some of the last words the Messiah said before he ascended up on high and we need to go over these verses and to receive them by faith just as you receive by faith that the Shabbat is still for us today that his feast days have not changed Yah has not changed the Messiah has not changed and so if he commanded us to keep all his instructions then these verses that I'm going to share with you are part of those instructions now remember the Messiah in Acts 10 38 it says that he was anointed by Yahweh with his spirit and with his power so every miracle Yahshua did he did as a man anointed with Yah's power anointing and by Yah's spirit and so we want to focus in on that power anointing. That power anointing is what flowed through the Messiah in Matthew 4, verse 23 and 24, where it says that, he, that many came to him and he healed every disease and every sickness among the people. And he did this to confirm, <coughs> excuse me, what Isaiah prophesied. And he prophesied that himself, the Messiah, would take all your infirmities and all your sicknesses, and by his stripes you would be healed. And so, the
the Messiah healed every sickness and every disease by the power anointing of Yahweh. By the power anointing of Yahweh. Now, in understanding this, it said that Yahshua, the man, he's not deity, he's been elevated to the right hand of the Father as a man. I mean, if you just look in Acts chapter 2, and this is Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, or on the day of Shavuot, verse 22, Acts 2.22, Men of Israel, heed these words, Yahshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim. A man from Elohim. Doesn't say he's deity. Having been pointed out to you by mighty works, wonders, and signs, which Elohim did through him, <clears throat> in your midst that Yah did through him Messiah didn't do it on his own he didn't do it because he was the son of Yah he did it as a man with the power anointing and with the anointing of Yah's spirit And so we need to realize that. Because a lot of people would say, well, that was the Messiah. No wonder he did it. He was called to do it. Well, you and I are called to do the same thing. If we'll receive it. If we'll accept it. When you read in Mark 16, Yahshua commanded them and instructed them to preach the Torah. And that when they laid hands on the sick, they would recover. And that they would cast out demons by the power of his name. And then it says, verse 20, that the disciples went forth and Yahshua worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. So the disciples had the power anointing. And Yah performed the miracles through them. All right, in Luke 24, verse 49, <clears throat> Yahshua is instructing his disciples right before he ascends. And he says, And see, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. Not the promise of the Son, but the promise of of Yahweh but you are to remain in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high Yahweh wants to clothe you anoint you smear it all over you his supernatural working power not to build a ministry not to glorify yourself but to glorify him by setting the captives free so that you and I would experience Luke 4 18 how the spirit of Yahweh is upon me and has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor has anointed me to open the blind eyes and to bring deliverance to the bound, to set the captives free, to preach the acceptable year of Yahweh, so on and so forth. He wants you and I clothed, just like I have this black shirt on. This, I am clothed with this black shirt. It's visible. He wants you and I clothed with his power. So that it is visible and so that we can minister it to others so right here Yeshua promised and declared 
that he's sending the promise of the Father and that you are going to be clothed with power <clears throat> from on high. Now let's look in Acts chapter 1. And these are just going to be some of the verses. Just read through the Gospels and through the book of Acts just how much Yah's power worked through the disciples, through the Messiah, healing the sick, casting out demons, setting the captives free. I mean, when you think about in Acts 16, where they were involved in the worship of the goddess Diana, and this woman was tormenting Paul, grieving him, following him around, and he addressed that spirit that was within her and commanded that spirit to come out. And it obeyed the words of Paul. Why? It wasn't just the words of Paul. It was the power, Yah's power anointing that flowed and broke the power of that demon and broke the control of that spirit over that city, Ephesus. And those that were building shrines unto the goddess Diana, that they lost their living because Yah's power tore down that stronghold, tore down that lies and deceptions. And that's something we should pray for in our own nations and country. That Yah's power would flow and break all these lies and deceptions and darkness that is flooding our nations. All right, verse 8. Yahshua speaking, he said, But you shall receive power when the set apart spirit has come upon you. So this is what we know took place during the feast of Shavuot in Acts chapter 2. That his power came upon those that were there. They received the power of his spirit. And you and I need to receive his power. We need to be immersed in his power. That's what the baptism of Yah's Spirit is all about. Being immersed in the power of Yah's Spirit. And when you combine the marriage of the Torah and the power of Yah's Spirit, that, that's an awesome marriage. See now, like I said at the beginning, many Torah assemblies and Torah ministries don't receive and don't function in, and the power of Yah's Spirit doesn't manifest in their ministries and services. But the Torah does. And Yah will bless them to a certain degree because of the Torah. But there are times that you have to have the power of the Almighty setting people free that only the power will deliver them it's not by might and it's not by our ability but it's by the spirit of Yah by the power of Yah says Yah so it says here but you shall receive power when the set apart spirit has come upon you so let me ask you this question. <clears throat> if you say you are spirit-filled, then you should have received the fullness of his power. And if his power is not manifesting, then that tells me that we have room to grow in receiving his power. Then maybe, just maybe, you have not received 
the set-apart spirit yet to the degree that you need to or even at all and I'm not talking about just having the witness of the spirit that you're serving the Messiah I'm talking about a immersion in the power of the of the father's set apart spirit power to raise the dead power to cast out devils power to perform miracles and then it says and you shall be witnesses in, in Jerusalem in Yehuda and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth and right after that Yeshua was taken up and then we read in Acts chapter 2 that when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and we need a fresh wind of the immersion of Yah's power. Now, let's just keep going. Acts chapter 6. And we read in verse 7. This is about Stephen. And the word of Elohim spread, or the Torah spread. And the number of the taught ones increased greatly in Jerusalem, And a great many of priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, filled with belief or faith and power, Stephen was filled with faith and power faith and power, obedience to the Torah and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Stephen had the power anointing and Yah performed great signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, let's just go back couple chapters to chapter 4 and you'll see in verse 33 it says and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the master Yahshua and great favor was upon them all great favor was upon them all it says with great power so we don't just want to be freshly immersed in Yah's power, but we want the great power. Now look in verse 14 of chapter 5. Acts 5, 14. And more believers were added to the Master, large numbers of both men and women, so that they brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Kepha, Peter, passing by might fall on some of them. And a large number also gathered from surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick ones and those who were troubled by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. They were all healed. That's the, the power anointing that was upon Peter. And we remember when Peter resurrected Tabitha, she died, and Peter prayed, and she was made whole. That's the power anointing. Yes, the power anointing is to cause people to repent to cause people to turn away from their lawlessness. But there are some times that before people will have the faith to do that, they will have to experience Yah's power some way, shape, fashion, or form in their life. And so the Feast of Shavuot 
is all about a marriage between the Torah and Yah's power. And we need to receive them both. We need to walk in them both. We need to be freshly anointed in them both. Not just with the Torah. And not just with His power. But with them both. Now, let's close in Luke 4. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. And I'll be the first one to admit I need more of his power anointing than I've ever had before in my life. Not just to walk in victory. Not just to overcome the attacks of the evil one. Not just to live a set-apart life but power to minister, to set the captives free, to bring restoration to people's lives and to restore them as if whatever they went through never happened. Whether it was an accident, whether it was um, an overdose, whether it was you know, they lost a limb, or they got, they got this sickness, or this disease, or whatever the case may be. In Luke chapter 4, verse 34, it says, okay, well, let's read verse 32. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. For his word was with authority. And in the congregation was a man having a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, What have we to do with you, Yahshua of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the set-apart one of Elohim. Notice he didn't say you're, you're Elohim or you're God the Son. He said you are the set-apart one of Elohim. And Yahshua rebuked him saying, Be silenced and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst, it came out of him without hurting him. So what delivered him? It was Yah's power. It was Yah's power that flowed through the Messiah when he said to be silent and to come out of him. The power of the Most High and the power of the Spirit went into him and drove that demon out forced that demon out, took that demon by force, and broke its power over that man's life. And that's what we need in this day, that the force of Yah's Spirit, the power of Yah's Spirit, would go into people's lives and break the bondages and force the evil one out. Force the demonic lies and strongholds and patterns of thinking out. Break their evil assignment and set that individual free. It's just not about the name, praying properly in the correct name, but it's about having the power of the Most High through that name. Through that name. Now, we know that there's power in the name of Yah and in the name of Yahshua. 
But how many times have we have prayed and nothing was changed because there wasn't no power? So we need we need somehow a marriage of his name and the power of the Most High. Now we can see in former ministries, they may not have known the Hebrew name of the Messiah, but they were immersed in his power and his power flowed through them like Smith Wigglesworth and William Brannan and many others and drove out the disease, drove out the demons, broke the bondages, and the individual were set free and they served the Almighty. They may not have understood his name, but somehow the power did the work. So that's something to think about, meditate on and think about. Is the answer in his name or in his power? And I believe we need both, not one or the other. All right. Then it says, And astonishment came on all, and they spoke to each other, saying, What is this word that with authority and power, authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. He commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. He commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. So they came out not because of who Yahshua was, but they came out because of the power that, they, that came against them and drove them out with a force. Remember? Matthew eleven twelve. we take the kingdom of Yah by force. Now, one more verse. In Mark chapter 4, this is when uh, Yeshua said to go to the other side. And a great storm uh, of like a hurricane proportion came against them in the boat. And they were all freaking out. And Peter came to the Messiah who was asleep on a pillow. And he says, don't you care that we're going to perish. And in one of the versions, I think it was Luke, Yahshua said to Peter, why don't you use your faith? Or in other words, why didn't you rise up and take authority over this with the power that you have by your spirit? Why didn't you deal with it? All right? And it says, let's pick it up in verse 38. And he was in the stern asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, it is no concern to you that we perish. And having been awakened, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Why? Because of the power anointing that was upon Yeshua. He functioned in it. He spoke through the power anointing. And the power came against that storm and quieted it down. Hallelujah. And then he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you not yet faith or belief? Why are you not using your faith? Why are you not using the power that has been given to you? And we read in Matthew chapter 10 that Yeshua transferred the power he had to his disciples. Here we can... Uh, uh, let's just finish reading this. It says, And they feared exceedingly and asked each other, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They were fab flabbergasted because of the power 
that manifested through Yahshua. And we see here in Matthew 10, it says in verse 1, He gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every bodily sickness. So we see here, and then we see in Matthew 28, and these are some of the last words of the Messiah. He said, in verse 18, And Yeshua came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make taught ones of all nations. Go and teach them what I've taught you. And th this was a transference of what Yahshua was called to do, now being transferred to the apostles. And we see in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, that the disciples returned from an evangelistic trip and said that even the demons were subject unto us through thy name. And then he said, in verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power and authority to walk on and tread on over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. So, Yah promised you and I to walk in His power. And so, you and I need to believe to have received His power anointing. And so, Father, we pray as we receive by faith with the words of our mouth and the actions of our heart, your power anointing. We thank you that just as you anointed Yahshua of Nazareth with the set-apart spirit and with power, that you would immerse us in your spirit and with your power, that we would go about doing good and bringing healing to all that are oppressed of the evil one. And Father, we just thank you. We say and say with your mouth, I receive his power anointing. I receive on this day of Shavuot. And I realize when you listen to this, it won't be Shavuot. But I receive a combination of the Torah and his power. On this day and from this day forward I shall walk greater and greater in your power anointing in your Torah anointing setting the captives free just like the early believers did and so father we just thank you for this word we thank you for this teaching and may as we go through this year in the next years of our life that your power would arise that your power would abound upon all those that obey your laws and commandments. That you have chosen and called to be set apart. And that we would go into the highways and the byways. And by the power of your anointing, convict people of righteousness. And by the power of your anointing, and by your power anointing, that you would perform signs, wonders, and miracles in people's lives as they have need. And Father, we just give you praise for it. And we thank you for it by the power of your name. If you want to connect with us, we have a website, YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com. We're also on Facebook, MeWe, Torah Network, X. And we pray that you would be blessed. Yah would make a way for you where there seems to be no way. If you are in need of something, a breakthrough, a bondage broken, a habit destroyed, healing, deliverance,
prosperity, whatever it might be. May the power of the Most High come upon you and make a way where there seems to be no way. And I pray that by an act of your faith, according to Mark 11, 24, that you would believe to have received His power anointing and that His power will begin to change your life and flow through you to change others for Yah's glory. And so until next time, Yah bless you. Yah make His face shine upon you. And Yah give you a great week of His peace. Shalom, shalom.